Percival Phillips was born to a well-heeled family in St Austell. Well educated, he grew up with the internal combustion engine and by the outbreak of the First World War was a skilled mechanic. In 1915 he volunteered to join the Royal Flying Corps and was sent out to the Middle East. Firstly as a mechanic, but it wasn't long before he was flying as an observer. He rose quickly through the ranks and with the encouragement of his commanding officer, Major Herowood de Havilland, brother of Geoffrey, he then remustered as a pilot. After training, he returned to the Middle East and later won the Distinguished Flying Cross for his part in quelling a Kurdish rebellion. He returned to Cornwall after the war ended, set up a garage business with Mr Hill, the very successful Hill and Phillips in Gover Road, St Austell. Garage work included overhauling rotary engines for the Berkshire Aviation Company, but by 1924, Phillips had decided to set up his own flying outfit. He bought his own Avro 504K, the famous BIZ, and he kept it until the end of 1935. He was able to set up a landing ground at Rocky Park, a mile or so southwest of St Austell. There wasn't a hangar at Rocky Park. The aircraft were picketed down in the open. In the winter, they were dismantled and towed down the road to the Hill and Phillips garage in St Austell. You can see the St Austell viaduct in the background of this photograph. Business was good, and in time, Phillips added more aircraft and two more pilots to his fleet. Captain Cameron, and curiously, Mr Summerfield. Assisting them was Mr Adams, who was a ground engineer, and also doubled up as a wing walker, brave chap. The Cornwall Aviation Company aircraft toured all over Great Britain, giving tens of thousands of people their first experience of flying. Captain Phillips alone is estimated to have flown 91,000 people in the Avro 504s. The young chap in this photograph is a chap called Arthur Clarke from Minehead. You might well know him better as Arthur C. Clarke, a famous science fiction writer, inventor and futurist. In the early 1930s, Phillips joined up with Sir Alan Cobham and his National Aviation Day displays. That's Phillips, fourth from the left, with Cobham third from the right. Cobham sold the flying display outfit to CWA Scott and it became CWA Scott's flying displays. But it was all over by the end of 1935. Once again, Phillips set up his own organisation, Air Publicity at Penshurst offering banner towing services and joyrides using Avro 504Ns, which were a radial engine version of the earlier K. Sadly, on the 13th of February 1938, tragedy occurred. Phillips had undertaken a banner towing job in Hull and was returning south to Penshurst. He decided to land at Tetworth Hall near Gamlingay in Cambridgeshire to have lunch with friends. It was a rough afternoon, and on departure, Phillips' aircraft struck the top of a tree and crashed, bursting into flames. Phillips was fatally injured and died later that day. He's buried in the family plot at St Muon, which is just southwest of St Austell, and merely a stone's throw from the old landing field at Rocky Park. In 1979, Ted Chapman published a beautiful book about the Cornwall Aviation Company. It's still easily available via second-hand bookshops, and if you're interested in this story, I would recommend you buy a copy. Somewhat astonishingly, Ted Chapman also found a 14-minute silent film about the Cornwall Aviation Company. If you follow these screenshots, you can find it easily on the cornishmemory.com website. I'll put a link to it in the description to this film. It's a fantastic film, well worth 14 minutes of your time. It's far better than the rubbish I make. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this film, thanks for watching and please subscribe. Bye bye.